First, the rollout of the Affordable Care Act's health care exchange got off to a rough start because of computer glitches, but there is still one month left to get signed up for health insurance that will begin January 1st. Joining me now to talk about some of the things you need to know about the exchanges, Jen Bursdale, the Executive Director with Missouri Healthcare for All. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. First of all, about those glitches, obviously not what you wanted to see, but a temporary thing. How much has that affected getting people signed up? I think it has slowed down the initial sign-ups. Um, it's certainly not the rollout that we wanted to see, but we know that the website is getting better. Uh, we also know that a lot of people were probably going to sort of window shop and learn about their options and ultimately sign up a little later anyway. So I think in the long run, it's not going to have a big effect. It's just been frustrating at the beginning. And you see in, in a state like Missouri where lawmakers have not been um, kind to the health care rollout because uh, there has been no promotion, there's been no public uh, effort to let people know about it, do you find that people in Missouri are a little bit behind trying to know what they're actually signing up for? You know, we've been really positively surprised by the interest in Missouri. I think because, in part, we have a very broad coalition of nonprofit organizations across the state that have worked to get the information out. We've had media coverage, uh, news reporters helping to get the information out. So we've been pleasantly surprised, even though we don't have those public agencies participating. So you go to the uh, the healthcare exchange, mm -hmm. and first thing, some of the first information you're going to have to give. You're going to have to give a lot of personal and income information, mm -hmm. I assume. You do. You have to give information so they can verify your identity. And it's, it's a pretty tight system. They know who you are. So we get into looking at the plans. Right now, uh, four different options on the table, mm -hmm. and I, they would probably range from uh, low premiums to high deductibles and vice versa, depending on how much you want to invest in health care. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it's really a difference in how you want to split the cost of your health care with the insurance company. So you can choose a plan that's got a lower monthly premium, what you pay to have the insurance, but you're going to pay more out of pocket when you use the insurance. So that's a good option if you're pretty healthy and just want to keep those monthly bills low. Uh, or you can choose to pay more in your premium up front, but you'll pay less when you use the insurance. When you, when you get a lot of first-time health insurance people signed up, obviously this is what it's all about, getting more people insurance. Mm -hmm. um, how difficult is it to pick the plan that they think they're going to need and make it affordable? You know, I, I, there's a learning curve for sure. If you haven't bought health insurance before or haven't bought it on the private market, uh, that's why it's good that there are a lot of people there and ready to provide assistance. So here in Illinois, most of the county health departments have people who are trained and certified to help folks navigate the new marketplace. Uh, on the Missouri side, we have community action agencies, health clinics. Uh, so you can find someone that will really sit down and walk you through all of your options, and I'd recommend that for someone that's got a lot of questions. So the first step is go through, go through your local health department. It's a good place to start. You don't have to. You can shop online at home and do everything there. But I know a lot of people have questions, and that's a good place to get some answers. One of the plans out there called the catastrophic plan, obviously, as it says, if, if you just want that insurance to cover that major event, that major illness. Mm -hmm. Those are available actually only for folks under age 30. Um, above age 30, you've got your choice of bronze, silver, or gold plans. Uh, because we start to have more health conditions as we age, uh, those catastrophic plans are less of a good deal once we get older. And Missouri has uh, dozens of insurance companies out there, but right now four of the, of the big ones are the only ones offering plans, but there are multiple plans to choose from. Right, so there are four insurance companies on the Illinois side of the river in this area and then two in Missouri, uh, but there, the number of plans is much higher. So there are 20 plans in Missouri, uh, 39 plans in the Quincy area in Illinois. So lots of choices actually for folks. A lot of people could get a little overwhelmed with uh, signing up for something so big as, as health care online. What is... What do you think the overall process is to, to log on, sit down, and look through your options? How long are we looking at? You know, I don't know how long it takes when the website stops having glitches. Uh, I do know someone who enrolled in a gold plan for $69 because he qualified for one of the many discounts that are available to people with limited incomes. And he said that once he got into the website, the process actually made a lot of sense. He said the questions were things he knew how to answer. It sort of went logically from, from point A to point B. So I think this, the website actually is very good once you actually get into it. So the questions there will actually point you to the plans you need rather than you having to actually choose a plan that you think will, will fit what you need? No, you still get to choose, um, but there's a lot of information there to help you take into consideration, you know, who's your, who, what doctors do you want to be able to see, what prescriptions do you take, how much do you want to pay up front, how much do you want to pay later. It is a big decision, and people should take it seriously and really think about what they want to do and not make a snap judgment. You mentioned the subsidies. So if you sign up through the exchange, uh, depending on income qualifications, you're eligible for subsidies. 
subsidies or tax credits? Yeah, it's one of the most exciting pieces to me because we've never before had financial help for people to buy private insurance. But if you make between 100 and 400 percent of the federal poverty level, so about $11,000 a year for an individual up to $45,000 a year, you can get, uh, they're called tax credit subsidies. They actually function like a discount on the premium that you pay for your health insurance. So you'll see that almost instantly on your monthly, on your monthly payments of, of what you're going to end up paying over the course of a year. Right. You just pay that discounted amount and the rest gets taken care of without you even having to worry about it. So it's a big change for folks that can afford to pay something for their health insurance and want to have health insurance but maybe can't afford on their income to pay the full premium. Now those subsidies, tax credits are an exchange exclusive type thing. If somebody wants to shop with independent agents, they still can. but those subsidies aren't available that way. Right. There are new protections available in all plans, and you can certainly shop with agents outside of the marketplace. Uh, wherever you shop, you can't be dis denied coverage for pre-existing conditions. You can't be charged more because you're a woman. Uh, but those, those discounts are only available through the marketplace. All right. Uh, we've heard a lot lately, too, about, the, the, you know, if you liked your insurance, you're going to keep it, people getting the cancellation letters. Uh, are, are you still able, if you did get canceled by your company, to go back to your same company and, and shop for a new plan? Absolutely, and that's actually what the companies are hoping you will do. One of the protections that kicks in January 1st is all of our insurance plans have to cover 10 essential benefits, things like prescription drug coverage, maternity care for women. So they're going to be better plans than a lot of people have had. The insurance companies selling plans that didn't cover those services actually had the option of adding those coverages to the existing plans and many of them chose to just drop those old plans and try and steer people to the new plan. So those letters I know have caused some angst for folks who have gotten them but the reality is there are better plans available now and for a lot of people they're actually going to cost less money. Kind of the largest group of, of uninsured out there are, are younger folks, 18 to 34. Mm -hmm. What is your expectations? Do you think they'll, they'll still pay the penalty, skip the insurance or are they needed to actually buy the insurance to offset everyone else who's coming onto the, the health care rolls? So they are important for the overall um, plan to work because the idea is we have everybody in the risk pool um, so that whoever happens to be unlucky and gets sick is covered. The good news is I think a lot of young adults really do want that health insurance. They've done studies through the Kaiser Family Foundation that showed that the number one reason young adults don't have health insurance is because they can't afford it. So the subsidies are going to help. Uh, here in Illinois, we have a Medicaid expansion that's going to cover young adults who make even less than they need to afford those subsidies. Uh, in Missouri, we're still working to pass that Medicaid expansion, so unfortunately there's going to be a gap in coverage for some people of all ages. But I expect we'll have young adults signing up once they see that they can afford it. And right now I think the penalty is $95, but there are plans less than that out there for people in that age group. Yes, especially if you qualify for one of those discounts. So as I mentioned, I have a family member who got a gold plan for $69 a month. Uh, it's going to provide him great coverage at a price he can afford. And speaking of the coverage, are there required benefits now to every plan? Mm -hmm. What kind, of, what kind of expectations should you have with those benefits? So the benefits are good. They're things that we would expect our health insurance to cover if it's going to be there for us. Doctors' visits, uh, emergency room, hospitalizations, prescriptions, maternity care. Um, folks should look carefully at things like uh, deductibles, co-pays, um, if you've got a medicine deductible. You pay different things to use different benefits, but all of the plans have to cover those benefits. All of them have to have a cap on your out-of-pocket expenses, so if you do get a catastrophic diagnosis and you have health insurance you're not going to end up on the hook for two hundred thousand dollars a year so there's really important new protections for consumers and then when we hear about um, no pre-existing pre conditions are no longer going to be held against you uh, is that a true benefit it's a huge benefit uh, you can't be denied for having a pre-existing condition and you can't be charged more for having a pre-existing condition that's what's kept a lot of people out of the market even folks who can afford to pay full price for an insurance plan I know people who have been turned down because they have a breast cancer diagnosis in their past uh, I know someone who was turned down for having allergies and I even know someone who was turned down for insurance because she had had surgery and donated a kidney to save her son's life so a lot of people have been shut out of the market because of those exclusions and they're going to be able to get in now. So when you sign up, everybody's on a clean slate. Everybody's treated the same. Yeah. Um, the only things you can be charged more for are um, geography. So if you're in a more expensive region for health care, you can be charged a little bit more. You can be charged more if you're older. Uh, family size, so a family of four will pay more than a single person. And you can be charged 50% more if you smoke. So it's a great incentive to quit smoking and get healthier. 
Well, how do rates, for example, northeast Missouri, western Illinois, compare to other parts of the country? So Missouri as a whole um, is about average for the whole country. I don't think Illinois is too far off. When I looked at rates before I came up here, rates were slightly lower on the Illinois side of the river here. Um, but, you know, both certainly have affordable plans ranging from 120 to about $350 a month for an individual before any discounts. Um, and what I've heard is that the majority of people who shop the marketplace will likely get one of those discounts to bring those costs down. So when you're shopping, uh, are, are you required to take plans from your home state, or can you look at another state and, and look shop plans there as well? The way the law was passed, you do have to buy a plan from your home state. Um, also important to know then if you're going to one of those in-person assisters, you should go to a person that's in your home state. So you can go to localhelp.healthcare.gov and plug in your zip code, and you'll get a list of locations near you. Because you've got people living on both sides of the river here, folks should stick with a helper that's in the state where they live. Okay. Small business owners, obviously, some with, with uh, much less than fewer uh, uh, employees will be turning to this. What's mm -hmm. some of the key things they need to know? So there's, it's called the Shop Exchange, and it's a similar system as the marketplace where small businesses can go compare plans, pick a plan that they like, buy something. Uh, they can also go to one of those in-person assisters for help. Small businesses are going to benefit from the same major protection as individuals, which is that they can't be charged more if their employees are women or if their employees have pre-existing conditions. That's what's been really hurting a lot of small businesses. Uh, and if they buy into the marketplace, they're going to get into having that bigger purchasing power that has helped larger companies have lower insurance companies up until now. All right. Anyone out there, uh, seniors especially, if you're already on Medicare, you're covered. You don't have to worry about signing up. Don't let anybody convince you you need supplemental insurance. Medicare covers the seniors. Really important if you've got Medicare, if you already have Medicaid, if you have insurance through your employer. If you already have insurance, you don't have to do anything but maybe educate yourself and pass along the information to someone who needs it. You mentioned Medicaid, uh, uh, especially in Missouri. Illinois passed Medicaid expansion. Missouri did not. If someone in Missouri goes on, finds out they don't qualify enough for to pay it out of pocket or for Medicaid in the state, they're still left out in the cold? Unfortunately, that's the situation we've got. We've got about 200,000 people in Missouri who are working low income and are going to fall into a, a pretty serious coverage gap. So we're working very hard to pass expansion in Missouri so those folks can get covered. Is this a one-time only sign-up? Is this an annual process? How, do, how will this work every year? So there's an annual enrollment period every year. This first year, it's six months, so very important for folks to know you've got up until March 31st to sign up this first year. Um, in coming years, it'll be October 15th to December 7th. That's when you can choose a new plan and enroll. Um, you, don't, you can stick with a plan that you like if you get into a plan that you're happy with. And if you have a qualifying event at another time of the year, so you leave your job, you get married, you have a baby, um, you can go buy a plan at that time also. So up until December 15th, it'll qualify you for January 1st mm -hmm. insurance. And then is March 31st, is that the deadline for missing, not getting penalized? It is. If you sign up by March 31st, then there's no penalty for being uninsured next year. Um, and it's also, you know, that's the period when you can get insurance. Otherwise, you've got to wait until next fall to sign up for coverage. That'll start in 2015. Okay. Anything else that you think people really need to be aware of? I would just say, you know, don't get caught up in the hype. There's a lot of great things coming. The website is getting better. I would advise everybody to look and see what's there for you. Um, it costs nothing to look. There's lots of people to help you. Uh, a lot of new options and new financial help that wasn't there before, and it's worth checking it out. All right. You mentioned health departments could be an asset. Missouri Health Care for All. Do you offer counselors or a phone service at all? We actually are not doing uh, enrollment assistance. We're doing public education. Um, you can certainly reach out to us and we can help you find someone. Uh, CoverMissouri.org is a great website in Missouri to find uh, folks with information. GetCoveredIllinois.gov is the Illinois-specific site where you can get information. So lots of people out there to help. All right. A lot to know about the uh, health care exchanges that are uh, finally getting off the ground after all the glitches. And we appreciate Jen Bursdale with Missouri Health Care for All for filling us in. Thank you. Thanks so much.